Welcome to the Dudeology Show, where real dudes discuss cool stories, awesome stuff, and killer gear. We're your hosts, the professors of Dudeology. Make sure to check us out, dudeologyshow.com, at Dudeology Show on your socials, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Welcome to Dudeology Studios with your host, the professors of Dudeology, and we are about to throw down seven different kinds of smoke. And my man Chris over there is a baller shot caller, 20-inch blades on the Impala, and he is going to get this track <laughs> laid down. And we are joined in the studio by Brian Jones. Brian, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Great yeah. to have you, Brian. Hey, to all of our listeners out there, before we get any further... We triple dog dare you to click on that subscribe button there in uh, iTunes and YouTube and then share us on all your socials. That's a triple dog dare. You don't say no to that. And once you do that, you've done your part in uh, advancing the movement. And uh, that's the effort to encourage dudes to get better and do great things, ultimately making the world a better place. Now, you guys are probably wondering, uh, well, who's Brian Jones and why do we have him with us? And we're going to get to that. But before we get to that... um, our, we saw our episodes are always better with beer. Right? They are, so we absolutely. Had, uh, we, had, we had the really good Beer Stop guys uh, on a couple episodes ago. Cheers. So right now, cheers. Cheers, cheers. guys. Cheers, everybody. Uh, what, are you, what are you drinking there, Chris? Got the uh, Terrapin Beer uh, Company High and Hazy IPA. Because I really like that Hazy IPA. I like the Hazy, and I have a uh, Coastal Love. Another ha- Wicked Weed. I think they're out of uh, okay. Charlotte or something. And I got a highlight. The highlight out of, uh, out of Tampa. Yep. Out of template. So let's enjoy. Uh, speaking of that episode and some previous episodes, I'm going to allow Chris an opportunity to admit his wrongs uh, on air and to grovel at the throne of, of the Dudeology show. And so, Chris, I'll go ahead and, 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 and I'll, I'll be humble enough to let you go ahead and, and admit your mistakes. I don't know the exact statistic, but I think in your words and uh, Brian Fantana's words, 60% of the time I've been wrong every time. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, and I've... I, I do all of our show prep and editing and uh, post, you know, post uh, show editing, and you know, I should know all the facts. But I've called Brandon out a few times on some facts. Let's take last episode for instance, where I told him he didn't use his coin term "good action" in that particular episode. I went back and uh, had to eat a little crow on that one. He did, in fact, say "good action" probably within the first ten minutes of the show. So uh, yeah, again, sixty percent of the time, I will most likely call Brandon out on uh, something uh, he hadn't done or got wrong, and then ends up, I'm wrong. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to oh, that. That's awesome. Hey, cheers hey, to you, man. I cheers. Cheers. Another cheers, man. That's it, awesome. Part of advancing the movement for dudes is admitting when you're wrong. Yes. Admitting right? when you suck. Sometimes you just have to. Admitting when you're terrible. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> no. Uh, but, so, and, and we tried to work in, like, uh, the, I was an Anchorman reference. Uh, we said, I said something like, pungent stings the nostril, and from Anchorman when he's talking about the, the Cologne Sex Panther when he brings it out. And I said something like 60% of the time, it works every time. And none of the listeners, like, got that. And fi- <laughs> finally, I had, we had someone comment on YouTube. They were like, stings the nostrils, ha ha. So here's what we're going to start doing. We will work in a, a some sort of uh, pop culture movie reference on, on every episode. It's going to be like an Easter egg. It's going to be like hidden. If you uh, write, a, write a message or leave a – either you can send us a direct message or make a comment, a post on Instagram, Facebook, or even on YouTube – and tell us the correct movie that we're, we're referencing, that the quote's from, then you'll get a Dudology Show t-shirt. If you're local and we can send you some delicious beers, we'll also send you some delicious beers from the really good beer stop. And speaking of pop culture and movies and references, Brian, you've been waiting patiently. Uh, when I first heard your story, I was fascinated uh, with the line of work that you're in. And uh, I guess you are the uh, you're, you're the the owner uh, founder of a, a Christmas story house and museum. Is that, that the is story? correct? Yes. That is correct. Um, did you grow up uh, thinking when you saw this movie, thinking, "Man, I'm going to make a life one time of 
of leg lamps and Red Rider BB guns. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a leg lamp salesman. Right. Like, you know what? I was, when I grow up, you know, I'm gonna go to school, study hard. I'm gonna be a leg lamp. Salesman. Like, I'm all in. I'm it's all like in. every kid who wants to be. A, hey, I'm gonna be a garbage man because it looks really cool with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I nobody want, ever. I want to smell like yeah. shit all day. It's yeah, awesome. exactly. Right. Uh, no, I, I, it was pretty much uh, the opposite. Uh, my dream as a small kid. My dad was a pilot in the Navy. My grandfather been in the Navy. Uh, I wanted to fly. Uh, Jet pilot, be a jet pilot for the Navy, and then uh, be an astronaut and fly the space shuttle. That was okay. my goal in life. Wow. Okay. Well, so where'd you grow up? Slightly. Uh, I grew up till I was about eleven or twelve in Hawaii. That's where my dad was stationed. Yeah. So hey, that's not so bad. Yeah, on the edge of Pearl Harbor, all. about a block and a half from the uh, the beach. So it was great. Sure. And then uh, Southern California until I left for the uh, Naval Academy. Gotcha. So, gotcha. All right. And so Academy. Academy, and, Naval Academy, good time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, an interesting adventure. Dif- dif- uh, definitely a different school. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. No, and that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and, and you know, thanks for, 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 for your service and, and, and thank you for that commitment. Um, so at what point then did you do some active duty time? I did. So uh, I graduated from the Academy uh, in 1998, late last century. Mm-hmm. Um, and went to flight school and proceeded to fail the vision test for being a pilot. I kind of knew it was coming, so it wasn't a complete surprise, but when you finally get that, you know, yeah, you're done thing, and you haven't even gotten in the plane, I got what they call the nammy whammy where you go to the physical and boom, mm-hmm. you're out. Uh, more than slightly a little disappointed, you know, to say, because, I mean, I'd done everything, studied aerospace, you know, Valley Tour in my high school, studied aerospace engineering, which is not easy. Um, uh, you know, it was a lot, of, a lot of work to get to the final... Yeah, I'm going to get to the gate and just boom, shut down. Wow. So that yeah. was, uh, yeah, a little bit of a bummer. So, so at that point in, in how the, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not aware how the, the, I guess the academy works. So you, you, you were kind of pre-selected to go to flight school. Yeah. So you, when you're, uh, you're a senior year there, when you're a first classman shipman, you, uh, you select, you basically service selection. Where do you want to go? And it's based on your class rank. You know, we, you get this, you know, from number one to number 900 something, you get to go out and select, you know, and whatever's available as, you know, your class rank comes up as long as you're physically qualified right. to do that job you know you get to pick that so that's and i i picked aviation so, you, so that didn't work obviously yeah it didn't work uh, out. and and then so do, is it then is it needs of the navy or do they well you have this a second and we see that like how do they what job do you do because you're still so, committed yeah so so, so, so so yeah if you go to the naval academy you owe six years at the mm-hmm. time they dropped it to five um just because you have 18 year olds telling them they have to do you know next decade you're going to be in the navy four right. years in yeah. the academy and six years in the mm-hmm. service. they dropped down to five which is nine years but still Still a considerable amount of time, though. So I was able to get, um, to go basically kind of pick what I wanted to do next. So you can go talk to, you know, places because I certainly didn't want to drive ships. I didn't get in the Navy for the boats. I got in for, for the planes. Um, and so my, my, I had three things I didn't want to do. I wanted to go be a CB because I thought it'd be kind of cool to build stuff. Go in Intel because I thought maybe I'd be able to, you know, maybe sometime get back to flight school. I'd go out and be an Intel officer. Or I wanted to be a SEAL, one mm-hmm. of those three things. And I pulled tendons on my knees so the SEALs were out. The CBs wanted civilian engineering, not aerospace engineering, for obvious reasons. We're not building yeah, space yeah. rockets here. We're building, you know, bridges, roads, yeah. and highways. Um, so Intel it was, and they had some some billets. I got to go up and talk to the uh, guy who was in charge of passing out billets. I said, like, do it. He said, fine. Called me up like maybe like a month later. Said, like, I got a spot for you, and I went to an Intel school in Damnick, Virginia. Yeah, isn't that where uh, that is where like. That makes like the seals or something. Yeah, there's there, right there's there, some yeah, yeah there's yeah. seals are stationed out through whatever. Okay. So, yeah. uh, who knows if I would have even made it through uh, um, buds or whatever. So yeah. we'll see. All my 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 room one of my roommates went on a couple friends. You know they sure. they said it wasn't that hard. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it's harder than it sounds, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Once you've gone through it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys were these guys were pretty hardcore individuals. Yeah. Or it's so. like anything w- w- when you do it, your class is the hardest, and then it got super easy. After yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, but Intel, Intel is, you know, what, 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 you know, I'm obviously not super jazzed about doing it. I'm going to go do it. It, seemed, it was the best that kept me off the ship. So I just, I'm not sure. So you did not want to be, I did not, I, I, six months boats and me just weren't going to get along. I didn't, okay. I, I've done some time in a shipment. I'm like, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, okay. it's, it's a ton of work to be a ship driver. And I was like, man, you got to have a passion for it too. Cause you spend a lot of time out there and I, it wasn't my, right. you know, what I wanted to do. Uh, so Intel was what it was. And then, well, in Intel school. So, you know, my dad you know, knew, you know, my parents knew I was super bummed, super disappointed, you know, but I'm going to make the best of it. Uh, but to kind of cheer me up, they made and sent me a leg lamp. It's kind of just a gag gift, you know, <laughs> cheer you up. I don't know. They're, they're trying to think of something. Something you funny. Know, to get my, my dad's even trying to pull all these kind of strings to maybe get me back into aviation. You know, people he knew because he was mm-hmm. in the Navy and who are admirals now. And they're like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. He's just, that's just how it is. And so um, it was just kind of, you know, just 
box shows up that says fragile on it. And it's kind of weird. And I'm like, what is this? I'm not expecting anything. We, we recently just had a like Intel brief about suspicious packages and bombs. <laughs> and stuff. So I'm like, so is, is this, this like around? Is this around pre nine eleven? Yeah, it's pre nine eleven. It's, pre -9 -11. it's, it's so 1999. And I'm okay. just kind of like, um, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't I'm like. Do I open it? Is this like a drill or is this just something weird? Or I'm like, I'm not. And, it, and it's a wooden crate too. So I'm like, right. this is just bizarre. Oh, they went all out. They, they went all out. My they freeze frame, frame, you know, praying the stencil on Of course, it's lost on me. I'm like, what the heck is yeah. this? And so I'm like, I. Guess what? Well, my roommate is there. He's my. He was in my same Intel class. Like, can we open? He's like, yeah, I guess. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> totally ignoring all the training we just yeah. got about not opening exactly. suspicious packages. Right. There's also a cardboard box with it too. And I was like, there's a lampshade in that. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, get down. It's a leg lamp. I'm like, what the? Uh, okay. I'm like, this has got to be my parents. Okay. So I call them up and uh, just to talk. I'm like, where'd you guys get this? And I'm like, get this. We made it. Nobody sells those. I'm like, huh. Well, that's interesting. That's great. It's hilariously funny. Chris Troy has been a big family favorite since the late 80s. And so I just put it in my window. Mom offhandedly says, not really a big comment, it's like, you know, that'd make a decent business. Nobody makes those. You know, mm -hmm. Other people thought it was cool or interested yeah. as we were making it. I was like, huh, I owe five years for my academy education. So, I mean, I've got two, at least two tours. I don't even sure. think a thing of it at the time. Yeah. So, so off I go to, into the Navy. And, and, and and so, so your parents go, just if we, if we look at kind of, we have one here on YouTube, but I'm sure I think everyone's very familiar. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an icon, right? Especially yeah. around yeah. Christmas time. But it really is. So they go and they find a mannequin. From somewhere, yeah, they had to go down uh, the garment district, get the and, get the leg, and get the fish net. It, it yeah. doesn't even look like this. It's not even nearly this nice. Yeah, it's, do, it's, do you still have? The, I still have it. It's in my office. Okay. You know, I thought I'd bring one, not two. No, 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 that's <laughs> cool. No, but my point is, like that—that that was like a solid though from your foot because that was yeah. like that's a heavy lift. I mean, yeah. nowadays you're Google, you're like. Oh, this would be funny, and I could probably go to Amazon. You could probably just buy, buy anything, yeah. but I could find anything I yeah. want to do. Yeah, find a leg lamp. For, find a leg lamp. <laughs> so, so you now have this leg lamp that you're in your, in your, in your, in your, in your uh, housing, or you know, wherever. In my condo, yeah. Your condo, it's with you. And where are you, where are you stationed? Uh, at this time, I, I'm in Damneck. You know, it was, I would take it with me when I, you know, got stationed in Hawaii. Yeah. Got stationed in San Diego. People always would come over like, "Oh yeah, the leg lamp from a Christmas story." So that'll kind of lead out to how it got into a business. It's just you know, people always thought it was kind of cool, funky, different. You know, so. Um, I guess how it became a business is so I, I went off, I got stationed with the P3 squadron, kind of like they fly here in Jacksonville mm -hmm. until they came up with the P8. Um, that's the one that looked with the big disc on top, right? No, so that's, a, that's an AWACS. So that's the P3 AWACS. is a, a submarine hunter reconnaissance plane, mm -hmm. um, 400 prop, maybe, you know, if you, uh, okay. and then now they fly a modified 737, which is a P8, gotcha. which is the follow on since the P3 was like from the 50s. Okay. My dad yeah, flew the P3 in the oh, 80s. Oh, so that was like so a actually, big Cold War. With yeah, the, yeah. With so, yeah. 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 So that was the plane my dad actually flew. So that actually, it was actually kind of cool because, so, you know, not everything that goes bad in your life is bad. Mm -hmm. So then I, when I, after Intel school, I got to select the P3 squadron out of Hawaii. I'm like, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, so I, got, yeah. I still got to be in aviation. Yeah, I'm sure. an Intel officer. I'm not a pilot, you know. Or and again, anything. you're in Hawaii. You find, in you Hawaii. find yourself again yeah. in Hawaii. I, so yeah, it was perfect. I got to go back home. You know, basically, do, you know, do kind of the same stuff my dad did as a job. You know, just not flying the plane, but you know, kind of the same, same environment, same you know, organization. So that I actually really enjoyed that. That was a, that was a fun time. Being an Intel officer was kind of cool. Got to be in the know yeah. on some stuff that was going on. You know, I'm like super junior ensign, and there's a little meeting every morning and. There's like the CO, the XO, all the, the high maintenance guys, all the department heads, and, and Ensign Jones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, hey. Yeah. So, you know, it's all the guys are like, hey, this is what we got going on, you know. So that was, that was kind of cool. We got a lot of responsibility right off, which yeah. is which is pretty much how the military is generally. You sure. can get more responsibility than you certainly would in any civilian job. Yeah. Right absolutely. out of the break. Especially at yeah, 22 or 23 yeah, years old, right? I was 20, yeah. 20, 23, 24 yeah. when it's like, hey, you're, you're in here telling me, see what's going on for Intel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, when I was in the Army, I would always think of that. We'd have... Uh, I was an enlisted guy, but we would have guys, you know, come in at 22 years old, and they're like, "Here's the platoon of 36 guys." Yeah, in charge. Don't screw it up. Basically. Yeah, don't like, screw it up. Like, hey, you know, uh, six months ago you were, you know, uh, at a fraternity party. Yeah. And uh, hey, you know, don't mess it up. You're gonna and learn real fast. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna learn really fast. And yeah. It's a lot of responsibility. You're gonna make a couple screw ups. A lot of responsibility. So when do you say, hmm, I got this thing. Maybe I should make one myself and sell it, or, or how does that start to evolve uh, from a gift that your parents gave you to? So that, that was my second tour in the Navy. So I, I, I got uh, I got orders to San Diego, which is where I wanted to go. But the job wasn't kind of yeah, – I got in doing – teaching Intel classes. Um, no, excuse me. Um, and so I did it for like – I was about maybe halfway through my tour. I'm like, yeah, I just don't – I don't want to make a career out of the Navy. I didn't mm -hmm. sign up to be an Intel officer. This isn't, this isn't what I want to do. No. I don't know. So – 
I was sitting there, okay, well, what am I going to do afterwards? I don't know. I, my whole plan in life was to be a jet pilot, spent 20 years in the Navy, you know, hopefully be able to be an astronaut as well. And then I just figured I'd follow on and be an airline pilot. So my whole life was planned out, you know, all, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And so what am I going to do now? I, I thought about, you know, um, let's see, I wanted to do tax. Maybe I tried taxes. I took real estate classes, did the headhunter thing to maybe run a Home Depot or something like that. And, uh, and I just, I kept thinking, it just, I would go to those interviews and it just seemed like it was a lot of the stuff I didn't like about the Navy that was just too corporate and just, mm-hmm. I don't know, just like, ah, this just isn't me. And the guy's trying to tell me, hey, don't salt or pepper your food because it looks like you rushed your judgment and stuff. I was like, really? Wait, this is what I'm being told <laughs> before I go to the interview. It's like, how about my skills and how smart I am or what I can do for the Wait, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. So the headhunter's so telling, head so, telling so, me. Like, so someone's like, don't, if you go to a lunch interview, yeah, like, go to lunch don't, interview. don't put salt and pepper on your food. Right you, away with before tasting it. So, so so taste it first, and you're like, oh wow, it does taste like shit. So it doesn't need salt and pepper. Yeah. Like, my, like, but if you like salt, that's the craziest thing. I'm I used, yeah, to, I I used like, to be in, a, in the did head you, hunting did business. You, did you ever tell people this? All the time. No, no, I never. Did. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> no, no, that makes no sense to me at all. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's just stuff like that. I just like it. It just didn't seem like me. It seemed like it was still going to be a lot of things that I didn't like about the Navy were going to be more in the corporate world. And so I remember back to the story my my buddy Teddy told me. He was driving, delivering for UPS. And he would go into the really ritzy part of town near where we lived and deliver. And one time he's just, he seemed to all the people talk to you that ask one guy, like, hey, what do you do? He has a big, huge, nice house. Like, I own my own business. You know, I own a bunch of cell phone stores down in LA and, you know, this is, you know, that's my, my business. So he, it seemed like, can you talk to anybody else? Anybody who did well or because they kind of enjoyed or got rich, owned their own business. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? I should, I should start my own business. I don't like what would I do? I have no idea. I don't know anybody in business. Everybody, you know, that I know from my parents to any friends, they're all, you know, they have corporate jobs. My dad's an airline plant. My mom's a nurse. You know, they they have, you know, a job that nobody's like an entrepreneur or owns a business. I'm like, ah, I don't even know what I do. So I'm sitting there thinking, you know, and I'm back in the, in the behind her in our, in our super secret inf- intel place one time with my, my buddy who's also a tenant. I was like, I should sell leg lamps. People always like the leg lamp. Why not? I should say, I said it out loud. He's like, I'll build you a website. He's a computer science major yeah, at college. Works, just sure. finished building, building a website. So, for so we're like oh two oh three. We're o two. Okay. O two. Okay, yeah. So we're o two. Yeah. You know, okay. The internet's still the wild west. Sure, eBay's a big yeah. deal. Amazon's just a bookstore. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that helps people set the scene. Like mm-hmm. you know, there's later when the business world asked me, they asked me, yeah, like, do you buy much stuff on Amazon? Like, should I sell there? You know, yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, <laughs> that kind of, that kind of sets the time frame of what we're okay, talking about. Yeah, how how yeah, far yeah, back this goes? Back when Amazon stock was under thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, okay, well, that's all I needed. So I just, I looked up how you needed to form a company on um, the paperwork. And I read a little book on it. Like, okay. So I filled out the paperwork, sent it to the state of California. They had Red Rider. Uh, I think they even named it the Leg Lamp Factory Store at the time, LLC, which then I changed to Red Rider Leg Lamps because like Leg Lamp Factory Store, like the factory store we make it, mm-hmm. we sell it right to you. And uh, so again, that's just the dumb name I came up with. So you're still on active duty. I'm still on active right? duty. Okay. So I, and then I, so I figure I, I get, I get the company formed. My buddy starts working on the website, and I figure out how to buy all the parts. You know, I find a, f- a place that makes lampshades up in LA. That I drive up to pick up lampshades. There's also a place around the corner that sells lamp parts. I buy these uh, mannequin piece parts, you know, to make the leg, and, and start tooling together my condo after hour, you know, after work, and, t- and I get down to work. It takes me about 15 minutes to make a lamp. I got them all assembly line style. Yeah. And so the first year of the business, I made and sold. And this is you. This is, this is just, just me. Just, with just a me. Like, I, yeah, just a screwdriver uh, parts. You know, just two them together. Okay. Probably certainly not something you all listed or you know that you probably will want to, to get these days. And I'm, I'm hopefully there's none of them out there that causing any liability at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, again, that's the that was, this is back in oh oh this, so it's oh three oh three now. Okay. Um, you know that I'm doing this. Um, and yeah. I mean, if I could have made more lamps, I could have sold more lamps the first year. Okay. So, you know, I've sold them on through the website, on eBay, not even Amazon at this point. That's just show you, you know. So it's the website and eBay and just, you know, listing lamps and, and selling them. Um, and did well, you know. So, but then, you know, it kind of goes through Christmas. I'm still selling a few. Uh, and then, but I'm, you know, but it's just me. And I'm working on a lot of stuff. I got a little, little warehouse. Um, actually, I, don't need, I just have a storage unit at this point. Not even a warehouse. It's just storage and store stuff. In San Diego. In San Diego. Yeah, it's just my 900 square foot condo. I'm building all these lamps in with like a little. So, so would you like light. get like, hey, tonight after work, I'm gonna do try to knock out like 10 or, or, or yeah, I would just build as many as I could. And sometimes you know I, I'm waiting on parts. 
you know, yeah. and that, that also leads into you know, so all the all the parts would come from China. So like sometimes the guy in LA would be like, hey, "I'm waiting on parts to come in for." It. So you'd have to you know, you have to drill a hole through the. I buy these, these high heel shoes. You have to drill a hole through that and the plastic thing to run the lamp rod and the wires mm -hmm. up through. So sometimes I just do all of those. You know, just one night, just boom, 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 just drilling holes with my, my drill. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any crazy stories of like hey, maybe you had a girl over or a friend over and it's first time they're coming to your house and. You've got <laughs> legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, legs. I was already dating my wife at the time, and uh, that's actually a funny story. So she thought I was going to get a corporate job and uh, and get a, actually get a job. So she, you know, she's she's married this junior officer. He's getting getting out. He's going to get this good paying job. It's going we're going to be solid. And I'm like, and I, I kind of decided, you know, when I, the legal land thing, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get out in September. That'll be right into Christmas. I'll, maybe it will see, we'll see how it goes. I still thought it'd be a side business. I just make leg lamps on the side to make yeah. a little extra money. And so I decided not to get a job. And so we're newly married. We're at our favorite Mexican restaurant just north of the border uh, of Mexico, uh, eating in it there. And everybody asked me, when are you going to get a job? And I'm like, a job? Yeah. Like, and she's like, 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 I didn't understand. And, said, and my, my parents sitting there, you know, kind of like, eh. I'm like, she has a job, like a J-O-B. So she spells it out to me, yeah, like, right, J-O-B. Oh, it's it's yeah. very intense, you know, because we're having basically a first argument or a little fight right in front of my parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's always been kind of thing, like, you know, a job, a J-O-B. So we, we, yeah. we, call it, we call it that. It's kind of a joke, a J-O-B. And that's been a running joke for the company ever since. Because um, my, my mom was a big fan. My dad wasn't, neither was my wife okay. at the time. They just weren't and, sure where it was And your wife was in the... Uh, She's still in the Navy. Navy. Yeah, we met in the Navy. Yeah, uh, the Navy. Yeah. And then we... Um, and then, you know, she was still in at the okay. time, but, you know, she was expecting me to, and I had planned to go get a job. I just yeah. had kind of decided in my head not to right away, and so I hadn't quite communicated that with her. I'm working on a bunch of stuff. And I sure. Kind of, and you probably really came home, and you're like, babe, I bombed that interview. I put the hot sauce on my food before yeah. I tasted it or whatever, <laughs> so, and, you know, whatever. And, I don't know yeah, what I saw me do that, and I was like, yeah. oh, and I forgot that one little roll, you know. <laughs> I don't know. So. so you're assembling these in your apartment, and, you know, you're kind of waiting for the parts and stuff, and it, it sounds like, though, you're, you're selling you said you, you, yeah, you so, could have sold as many as you could have made. Yeah, like time. the first couple of years I would run the business, so it's just me. I'd lose about 20 pounds. I just didn't have time to eat. Yeah. I'm so busy answering customer service stuff. There's even one time we just shut the phone number down and said, hey, we are not taking calls. I don't have time. I can't sit here for 20 minutes, 30 minutes talking to somebody, you know, asking them a bunch of questions. Like, you either order or you don't. You know, I've got so much business, right. I'm turning it away. So that's when I kind of knew I was onto something. But I really was spending so much time just on the manufacturing part. I was, I was missing out on how to expand the business that. It's like, how do I get these made by somebody else? And it was just so expensive. And then every time I would go up to LA, everything but the shades, all the parts came from China. Oh, so I'm waiting on parts from China. Like, what if these could just be made in China and come all as one? I didn't have to put it together. But how do you do that? I'm sitting in the back of my uh, Nana's porch up in Washington in, uh, in a little town called Indianola, just sitting there um, reading Ink Magazine because you know, I'm trying to be a business yeah. guy. I had taken all these little small business classes by uh, this place called Score that's run by the SBA. It's like a okay. mini NBA, just tell you how to run a business, competitive advantage, you know, your accounting, all the stuff you know, I didn't get. I mean, I'm a smart guy, but you've you know, got to know, sure. you know things like that um, to run a business. You don't want to learn a lesson the hard way. Yeah. Uh, the more you know, starting out, the better. Um, and so I'm just like in the back of Ink Magazine is a little black and white ad. It says entrepreneurs have your stuff made in China. Really? And that was it. That's how. That's how. I, that's how. Yeah. So I called this guy up. I said, "I well, I want to buy. I want to. I've got this product. It's a, it's a lamp made out of a leg that I'm making. I got some revisions I'd like to make to it. I gave him kind of a prototype and a list of things I'd like to change. He wanted me to order two thousand eight hundred of them, basically four C containers." Which are C containers the size of a, a, con a Conex, right? Like yeah, a, like a Conex box. Yeah. yeah, so okay. it's basically it's basically a semi truck. So, so he wanted you to order four was the minimum run. Four, four was the minimum run, okay. and I, but they're fully assembled. Fully assembled. Okay. And uh, but I didn't have the money for that. I was like, oh, I mean, and and later and so he's a Chinese guy, American, you know, who, first generation. His parents moved over. Um, and he works with a, a white guy in China, which is kind of funny. So yeah, on the back, they're, back, they're, they're, opposite, they're opposite kind opposite, of thing, okay, you know. Sure. But so he he would get the orders here and send the guy in China for stuff. And I was like, ah. So we, we talked once, and then I finally ended up going back. I was like, hey, all I can afford is twenty one hundred. Would you would you still be willing to make? A, I could, you know, it'd really be awesome. And he talks back. He's finally like, he's finally like, he's and then come to find out, he's just getting started. He he had talked to this guy in China. So he's like a broker. Kind he's of a broker. He's basically right, a factory yeah. broker. And you find a lot yeah. of guys like this. They basically so you don't have to go over to China. And he he knows the he knows who's good, who's bad, kind of so you don't get the wrong deal. Uh -huh. And so if I goes, yeah, I'll make you twenty one hundred. Fine. So we, we get that set up. Mind you, I've never seen this guy. You know, you get a couple. You know, never met, never had any little. Um, so I'm just risking it all, basically. I mean, what if it comes with like an arm? Right? Yeah, so exactly. Like well, they, they, sent, the they, sent, they sent me a couple. Uh, you know, a couple samples back and forth. So that seemed pretty legit. Um, 
And then, you know, yeah, I, I got, you know, three sea containers. And I, my mom, I didn't even get a warehouse at first. Like, oh, yeah, where am I going to put these? I had to go, I had to go out <laughs> in a warehouse. This is how naive I am back yeah. in the day. I was like, so did they call you and they're like, hey, you need to come get your, get your stuff? Well, see, that's what I thought I was going to have to do. But now that's even why it's so great and so easy to have to manage. China. They handle all the logistics door to door. They still do. Okay. So it, it leaves the factory. They take it on a truck to ship in China. It gets huh. on the boat. It gets off the boat. We you know we get kind of like little updates now, but even I just wouldn't you know back in that time they'd be like yeah it'll be there like on this around this time and then I get a call like hey two days from now we're gonna have the trailer at your, at your warehouse okay and that, that's how it's so awesome about people don't realize you don't yeah. even have to set up any all logistics they take care of all nice. night so you had to go find a warehouse I had to go get a warehouse so I got one and I started looking around and I was like you know what this one's too small so same 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 landlord has a bunch of little small it's big kind of like an incubator place like can I get a bigger one <laughs> so I got a bigger one and uh, yeah, they finally showed up and I mean you have not lived until you've unloaded a sea container by yourself by yourself I had to do it by myself it took me Are they all day in the crates already too? yeah so they're just in they're just in cardboard boxes and then they, like then um, started ship stuff. And the cardboard wasn't thick enough, so all the boxes are crumbling and crushing the shades. And, and then I find also find out I, I find out about dimensional weight. If your box is so big, they charge you as if it was like thirty or forty oh, pounds. That's wow. so costing me a bunch of money. Even I learned all kinds of even though, even, even though, though it doesn't, it doesn't it only weighs five pounds, but so oh, I had to get yeah. that redone. Um, you know, all the boxes, the cardboards had to go get another. You know, start on all kinds of problems. Oh, that it's all the small stuff. It's the details that'll catch it. That yeah. wasn't the details. Okay. That's what's okay. going to catch that's it. That's interesting. Yeah, that's so, interesting. It's almost like you could shoot your eye out if you weren't careful. If exactly. Weren't careful. Yeah. Oh, that's good reference. Uh, good reference. So, bravo, bravo, bravo. Way, way to work that in. Bye, <laughs> bye, bye. We'll, we'll let you get a pause. We'll let you get, we'll right. take a couple drinks, uh, sips your rear. But by the way, the, the reference for this show that we said, the Easter egg, it can't be from... Movie, the movie of Christmas Story because that would be too easy. Yeah, so we gotta obvious. work something else yeah. in there, right, Clark? Yeah, we gotta work something else yeah. in there. Okay, so all right, so, so, so you have a, a connex of whatever. Yeah, and so I got three of them. I got some stuff. friends to help me do the and other like, ones. Now I got twenty one hundred. What's the demand at, 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 at this time? Are you ordering for like the following season? I like thought I had. I thought you know that, well, that was a minimum order. I'm like, nah, it's probably taking like three or four years or so. Because I sold five hundred the first year. I'm like, okay, okay. so yeah. if twenty one hundred, I'm like, that's maybe if I sell more because I could have had made five more. Like that's probably three years supply. Sure, I sold almost all of them. In like what time frame? Like, like in like a month and a half. Really? Maybe less. And this is just on yeah. website and eBay. Website and eBay. Now, and is, there's, it, is it seasonal? It is. The business is definitely seasonal, but we'll still like even like this time we'll sell like three lamps a day. You know, people need a leg lamp. They know? need them. Yeah, of course they do. Is that amazing though? Like. The, the power of and it kind of goes into like the power of story and the power of culture mm -hmm. right? I mean like that movie is like it's like almost part of like American culture it, it really is and, and how um, I mean my kids know it I, you know I know I, I watched it I think it was 1980 82 maybe when the movie came out or what but I remember it growing up like every yeah. year like that was I think after Thanksgiving it starts TBS or whoever used to run that that uh, movie a Christmas story all the time it's just part of like something you just know. Yeah, growing and that, up, that, like being, a, being an American, you just you, you know, know a Christmas story. You know a Christmas story. You just know it. Yeah. And that's what that's what crazy. that's what was you know what really got the business rolling is there's already a market for it and nobody mm -hmm. was meeting it. Right. Some people like well, I they'll ask me a business because they know I'm a business. Like I'll be like, well, how is your product out there? Are people already looking for it? Do they want it? Or are you going to have to educate the market that people mm -hmm. want it? So it's like. You know, I just started selling them, and people are people are already looking for them, so yeah. they went and found. There them. was a market with no product because a lot of times yeah. you have to create it. You may have to create a market if it's yeah. like a new product, but there was actually a market with no. And product. so yeah, so that's what that's, that's what saved that. me a lot of cost, uh -huh. and then why right. my business you know took off and you know did well. I was kind of lucky, or you know that I picked a product for which there was already a market. It, it just that's to, kind of it yeah. just had to show up in a. Google. You just had to show up and like boom here you know, the you people, know. Wanted, people were already wanting to buy it, but nobody was doing. No, it's it. just, but if you would have been flying planes or on a space shuttle, that would never happened. Yeah, because your point earlier, you said you know you're, you're you know or, or your mom and dad wouldn't uh, yeah they, they all know all over God's it. creation to, to 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 put that thing together yeah so he didn't he didn't he didn't quite make it in the pilot program but he got his major award anyway yeah. is that the major oh, award? Wow. But, nice so it's still another reference from the same yeah, video, I so yeah. you gotta okay. I, I did my research <laughs> you know I've seen the movie about a thousand oh, times oh it's about time it's about uh, time exactly, you did your research Chris. exactly I know. So is this does this fall into more of the novelty or gag gift category or both? I don't know. It's almost falling into the Christmas decoration category. Okay. At this point. You know, only in America would a leg lamp in the window say Christmas to people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's still a no novelty gag gift. We get people buying it for all kinds of reasons, but yeah, it's usually around Christmas. Um, but then yeah, so I mean, if 
it's just kind of fun to have. It's just kind of silly, you know, just, yeah. you know, if you put it in the window and I know people, they'll just put that up in the window and that's all they got for their Christmas decoration. It's just a leg lamp in the window. I mean, that's pretty easy. If you think about it. that's, that's, that's in your hall closet or wherever, you know, nine months out of the year, 10 months out of the year, you just pull it up, boom, done. Nope. Got some presents underneath it if you need to. So you sell these 2,100 uh, units. Yeah, almost all of them. I probably sold and, maybe 18. And, and then is that when you're like, I don't need a J-O-B. I don't need a J-O-B. <laughs> yeah. like, bam, bam. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, so what happened that year is, so my wife went on deployment to the Middle East, and she's on, a, an, a, on an AMFIP driving that. And then the captain of the ship knew, ship knew what I did. Um, you know, he thought at first I sold lava lamps, and then he uh, used leg lamps. So the XO lava lamps are cool, yeah, too, by yeah, the way, but so, there's something totally different. Exa- it's a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the executive officer, and then, you know, I gave the executive officer a deal, and he, he got one for the captain's joke, but he didn't know what a Christmas story was. Like, why am I the only person who ever... Yeah, you didn't know. There, there's people sometimes. I, when I, I people ask me what I do, sure, it wasn't like, Russian or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> his last name was Jones, Captain Jones. Yeah, so it yeah, must sure be related it was. Sure, it was. Sure, it was. Yeah. Sure it was yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it was just kind of. So he's just kind of figuring out why he's the only guy who doesn't know about this, and he comes across the eBay ad where they're selling a Christmas story house, the house that was in the movie. Okay. And he tells her, "Oh, she's up on the bridge. So, you know, he prints it off. He has the best internet con- connection because he's the captain. Sends it up to her while she's driving the ship at like you know midnight across the ocean." Um, says, hey, your husband should buy this for his business. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Takes her like, he, he, he prods her a couple more times. Hey, did you send that to me? Yep. No, it's because you're so busy. You're yeah, running around yeah. on deployment doing stuff. That's again why I didn't want to drive a ship. And she's probably thinking like, what am I going to do with an old broken yeah. down house in Ohio? Yeah. In, Ohio in Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio. Cleveland, yeah, Ohio. Like, it's, it's, probably it's, not. She's like, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't even know. She had no idea. So, and she, you know, we talked to you. She can't see how the business is going, going crazy in its, in its second year. And so, she finally sends me an email, blah, 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 blah. Oh, by the way, she's either selling a house from Christopher on eBay. I was like, what? Boom, stop reading her email, right, you know, but a new window, eBay, Christ- a Christmas story, you know, scroll down, there's the house. I'm like, no way. <laughs> look at it, look at it, five seconds, like, yeah, I'm going to buy it. Click, click the contact seller. Yeah, hey, I want to buy your house. I'm serious. My name's Brian. Here's here's my phone number. Yeah, and you know, hits in. Um, so nervous, I actually sent it twice because I wasn't sure if you know it went through. <laughs> and um, the guy calls me the next day. Um, his name was Al, and he's like, "Yeah, it's just you know, it's a rental property for us. I've, I've got the the bidding up to about one fifteen. You really couldn't bid on it. It was more like a real estate listing. Yeah, I don't even know if what one fifteen was true. Mm-hmm. And so I said, "Well, if, would you if I gave you one fifty right now, would you stop the bill, bidding and sell it to me right now?" Yeah. And he's like, "Well, I don't know. That sounds like a fair deal." Um, you know, but let me call my let me call my brother because we own it jointly. They're, they're, they'd inherited from another brother who died of a heart attack in the bar across the street. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little sub, little sub note. I don't yeah, even exactly. know why I always that's include a, that. It's a good part of town. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, he calls me back. So yeah, I'll sell it to you for that. And I was like, yeah, I'll send you a down payment. So I sent him a check for fifty thousand um, dollars because he also was like, well, how are you going to pay for this? The house yeah, is probably yeah, only yeah, worth yeah. forty or fifty. It's yeah. being sold as is. You know, yeah, it's, not good, it's not good. It's not good. What's uh, an appraisal? It's not. Yeah, it's not good an appraisal. Price. Even if it comes back, the, the middle, the downstairs is not a really good uh, renovation done. Just enough to be, you know, a, a, kind of not so great rental pro- rental property. And then upstairs still with the studs, all the you, know, you can see all the duct work, and it's not even done. And, there's a park truck parked across the driveway, uh, perpendicular, <laughs> yeah. so that so the trucks won't drive through and don't fill down the the back of the hillside oh, stuff like God. that. So yeah, it's bad. Um, but I don't know. This I haven't seen it, and it doesn't matter because I'm like, yeah, I'm just so I emailed uh, Beverly back said, hey, I, the house is mine. She thought I was kidding. She like she writes back, oh, very funny. Like I was like no no no, I, I bought it, and she's like, what? And I, all, all I got back was one line. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Oh, so that's been another good line. So, because wow. I basically spent just spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars. But she had a little bit. But you know, smart, smart guy. Because you threw that at her, and you knew she had a little bit to get home. She's out. <laughs> so yeah, so I didn't even ask. You're like, hey, oh, by the way, this happened. So you can either be mad or w- w- yeah. all your emotions can funnel by the time you get yeah. home, and you can accept this reality that we now have a second home. And oh, we don't even have. This is our first home. Oh, your first home. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's where the story gets worse. Oh, is okay. I've just spent the money that we're going to use to buy our own down payment, being newly married on a house in expensive wow. San Diego, yeah, wow. and a kind yeah. of spot, but we'd like to buy a house instead on a beat down rental property that happened to be in a movie of Once Upon a Time in Cleveland, Ohio, yes. a place I didn't even know where Cleveland, Ohio was. I had to look it up on MapQuest. Yeah, so this is the perfect time to uh, <laughs> good map quest uh, reference too. Yeah, by cheers. the way, yeah, good. yeah. Cheers! I'm getting asked like, for. Uh, I'm having the best time. The... So I'm just gonna keep uh, drinking beer and listening to your yeah. story. Dude. That's this all right. That works. So it was, it was an ask ask for forgiveness later, not for yeah. Forgiveness. Well, it's one of the things. I figured I had to move pretty quickly. And in yeah. fact, Al got an offer from some guy in North Carolina for two hundred thousand. Mm. But he kind of liked me a little bit better, and wasn't yeah. You know, like he wasn't real sure about that. 
We didn't have anything in writing, by the way. So you could be like, hey, I got a better offer. You know, you want to match it or this guy's going to get it. But now he's did, like, now, did he, he know your business? Did he, he did. He knew what I was doing. He knew I sold, sold leg lamps and, you know, what was going on with that. So, um, and how did you know, like, and verify this was the house? It had pictures of it. And we have I have the eBay listing. In fact, I can show you a picture. Nice. Uh, yes. It doesn't even look. So this is a, mo- a book my mom made me for, for the grand opening. This is what the, the eBay listing. ad looked like. So this That's was the, the listing, listing for it. Wow. And um, if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're not, if you're on iTunes right now, stop and go over to YouTube and actually uh, like and share both of those, iTunes and YouTube. So, uh, check it out. But this is an eBay listing. Yeah. Four bedroom, two bath. You're built 1895. 1895. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Impressive. So you get up there and I get, you, so, so you buy it sight unseen. I buy it sight unseen. Um, agree to, you know, the purchase, all, you know, all that. Um. My sister and I go up on the on December twenty seventh of two thousand four to check it out. And to be honest, I don't really know what I'm going to do with the place. Bed and breakfast pops into my head first. Mm. Second one is, hey, we'll make a museum. I'll make I'll renovate it because it's got gray vinyl siding, new windows. They've updated, you know, which does you can still kind of see underneath it. It's the movie, but it, it's not got the yellow with the green trim. I'm like, ah, oh, but then what do we made a museum on the outside? Uh, you know, it looks like that, but we have like things about how the movie is made and kind of learn about it stuff. And then I was like. Then I got there, and I, was, I, I, I finally made the wrong turn, and finally got to this house, and I'm like, oh, there it is, and that's really cool, I'm like, wow, this is neat, and then I'm like, there's the shed in the backyard, I'm tromping around the snow yeah, right. to go check it out, mind you, somebody lives there right there, at the time, they're probably like, what's this <laughs> black <laughs> I'm like, I didn't get shot by somebody thinking I was trying to break in their house, um, you know, but I was like, wow, this is kind of cool, so I'm like, I felt like I was in the movie, like, I was on the set, and that's what yeah. it dawned on me, the funny thing, what if we renovated the house back? outside and inside and put the you know but a lot of the movie was shot on a sound stage so like you got to kind of compress it into the mm-hmm. house I'm like that'd be cool if you kind of feel like you're at the parker's house like they're gone out to go get the christmas mm-hmm. tree or they're out doing something else getting chinese turkey and you could actually like relive it and we did all the scenes inside that that was that was basically kind of my third idea and that's what really stuck and that's what we made with okay. so i ended up buying the house across the street which just happened to be for sale i found that later which is a hilarious story and, and ended up buying that and being a museum gift shop at first. And I bought a couple more properties around as you know. So Christopher that were all House, from the from the from the, from the, from the, the, the story. I mean, pretty much the movie happens on like that block. Yeah, yeah that I block. Remember. So yeah, I, yeah. I bought up about half of the block over time. Right. Um, and we just have basically have the house, another house, uh, the museum, and then the gift shop next to it. So and then a parking lot and stuff. No, so, I, saw, I saw on your website you can actually rent out the upper. Yeah, story. so we've been only doing that for about the last three years. So you can, when we from basically a half hour closing to a half hour before opening, you can rent the house um, and, and basically spend the night and relive, you know, the scenes, do stuff, you know, sleeping in Ralphie and Randy's beds on the second floor. And then there's a, a third floor loft. It's actually like, you know, maybe three, two and a half story house. Not really just, you know, so that has like a full bedroom, living room, bathroom, and a kitchen. And that's a modern part because when I was doing the house, I like, I didn't, that part of the house wasn't in the movie. In fact, I had to cut. It was a duplex. I had to cut the hole in the ceiling. I made the contractor do it, not me, personally. Right. But in order to put the stairs in, how it looked on the set. So to make that that work. And that part was, I thought maybe we'd have a curator who lived there or something. And I would, for the years, I would just stay there when I came into town. Because my name is Cleveland, Ohio, and I lived yeah. in San Diego at the time. So, um, yeah, it, it was some interesting challenges. Um, and, like, yeah, we pulled a whole industrial dumpster full of junk out of the basement when I started to renovate it. Really? So. So it was pretty rough condition. It was in rough condition. It was a, it was in it was in bad shape. We basically had a completely you know unupdated gut everything. We do all the mechanicals, electrical, plumbing, everything to you know make it work again. Wow. So at any point in in kind of this crazy journey of opening that box from your parents to purchasing this half a city block and you know suburban uh, Cleveland, Ohio, yeah. and everything that's going on, were you ever like? Dude, what, like, what the hell am I doing? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, like, no. Like, 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 am I what? Like, what? Well, it was, was kind of what was, you know. It was kind of a uh, here. I'll throw, um, you know, if you build it, they will come. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. And so, I, I, but I'm hoping they'll come. I don't know if they're gonna come. Um, hopefully, people will show up. You know, I was so nervous. It was, and I used like five different credit cards and two home equity lines of credit to get this rolling. Like if, so the house was 115 and it cost 240 to renovate it back because I had to redo everything. Everything. So you basically took it down to the start. Or, I had to take everything off. In fact, the, like, the original siding was still on, but it was underneath the vinyl. They cut big holes in it and they put nails and stuff and it was old. So I had to take all the signing off, put a hardy board um, and do just basically everything. Remove some rooms around so it would know, match to how the set looked mm-hmm. uh, to give you that feeling. Um, and so, yeah, so I had like five credit cards, two lines of credit, and we rolled into opening day on financial fumes. Like, if people don't yeah. show up, uh, I'm not real sure what we're doing. I even had to negotiate people who were working with me, like, 
and, and for the PR to like pay people after the fact, okay. hoping you know things went well. Like, hey, yeah. well, I'll, I'll, you know, you can start at this date, but I'm gonna pay it till this date, you know, kind of thing. For yeah. right. for um, we had a little misunderstanding with one employee. No, I didn't didn't really want you to start then. I need you to start later. <laughs> so I'm gonna write you a check. It's called a post dated check. Yeah, post dated <laughs> check. So it was like that, but yeah, people. But so I was so nervous. I even slept in the house the night before because I didn't want to, like, I don't know, oversleep and miss that. I'm like, if I oversleep, at least I'll be here if somebody yeah. wake me up. I don't want to be like, hey, you know, the grand opening isn't happening. But, at, and, you know, fortune smelled on me. It's it's the day after Thanksgiving in Cleveland, Ohio, and it's, like, mid-70s. Oh, wow. Sunny day. Good just party. beautiful. Atypical day. Atypical day. I, this guy who's hooked me up with this PR, you know, that we're going to pay after, did a great job getting the word out. Um, and the, it's a three or four person wide line down the block and around the corner. Wow, really? It took it, at one point. It took four yeah. hours to get into the house. It's oh amazing. my gosh! Yeah. It's like Disney World. Yeah, it's it was yeah. awesome. You know, you yeah. couldn't have asked for a better opening yeah. day. So, how's like the community? Uh, that, uh, that, and then when did, when did that open? What year? Uh, right? like so I bought the house in year. December of '04, and we opened mm-hmm. Thanksgiving the day after Thanksgiving in 2006. Okay, so is it uh, now? Is the museum like the physical location of the house? Is it a year round thing? Yeah. So a- with with a little COVID, we're yeah, not quite yeah, so year round. Sure. We actually even had to shut down, you know, for orders. Uh, right. And we're, we've closed two days a week, just kind of in the middle of the week. Um, you know, business is down to like a third of what it was last year. Yeah, which, yeah. Which is about understandable. Normally, yes, we are uh, seven days a week, year round, except for major holidays. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so we, we have people coming all the time. People come just for that. People come because they're doing other things in town. We use, on, a, on a good year, we get somewhere between eighty and 100,000 people to come to see that. Wow. So, so this is like the amazing. whole like destination it's vacation amazing. trend. Yeah. Yes. So you could plan to do a destination vacation to the house. Yeah, we've had people, they, 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 they do their vacation in the Crystal House is, you know, the final point and go back to the way. People drive four or five hours just to come see the house. See it. Yeah. We should add that to our winter, de- we did a summer destinations episode, we should do it to winter destinations. Absolutely. What's the town? Is it actual Cleveland? It's or Cleveland, it's Ohio, Cleveland and it's, it's five minutes out of, outside of downtown. You can actually walk from downtown to the house. I've done okay. it before. I couldn't yeah. get an Uber and I was right, at a baseball yeah. game. Like, I'll just walk. Yeah, guys, just walk it. Just yeah, it's, walk a little, it. it's, a little, it's a bit of, a, but we also do like a 5K where we raise money for the neighborhood. And so it's about, it's about three miles and you run from Higby's, which the department store is in downtown Cleveland. Okay. Well, what used to be the Higby building. Since that's where Santa Claus kicked Sa- boot, yeah, exactly. boots, boots Ralphie in the face. Yeah, and, and that's how the movie ended up being it. filmed in Cleveland. But so we do a 5K, and we get about uh, I guess 6,000 people who run from Higby's to the house. And we do that every year on the first Saturday in December. And then that's like the physical uh, experience, you know, I mean, the yeah. in-person experience. And then uh, products online. Or, or, or yeah, we sell stuff online. online. We sell stuff in the gift shop. Uh, the gift shop's about 4,000 square feet. It's a, it's a low-slung building. I bought one house that immediately wasn't big enough, that, and then we expanded that one out. And so now it's it's, it's a it, it fits in the neighborhood. You it's kind of it's, a, it's meant to surprise you when you walk in. You're like, wow, this place is actually pretty big, mm-hmm. you know. But it does it's we want to you know make it a commercial venture, but also at the same time be respectful of the neighborhood and keep sure. the whole you know thing going on. That you know that it basically there's a if the set you know if they just start finished filming yesterday. Um, so you can you know, appreciate what's going right. on there and see the house. And what, what's your what's your uh, is is the lamp itself the the number one selling product? Yeah, leg lamps, lamps by right far there. are definitely the number one. Okay. And so basically, it goes by scenes. Uh, the most popular thing are leg lamps, followed by Flick with his tongue on the pole, followed by bunny suit. Okay, remember <laughs> We're talking we're talking night lights. Now, um, yeah, yeah. So we sell four different types. There's a bigger one that looks more like the movie one with the so butt that, cheek. That, 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 that's like the. Re- this oh. is like the mid size one. Okay. Uh, and then there's a there's a smaller desktop, deluxe desktop yeah. that looks kind of nice. And then the even smaller one that, and the night lights, ornaments, nice. leg lamp, uh, bottle openers, leg lamp, this that, leg lamp, T-shirts, <laughs> shot glasses. Yeah, no, no. And, and do you have like, uh, I mean, are there like, are you like the certified? A Christmas story like that, or how does that work? Like so, uh, licensing. Yeah, or, yeah or so that, that, or I started out without a license, um, just making leg lamps, and you could, you you can make a leg lamp, you just can't call it a Christmas story leg lamp or associating with a movie unless you have a license. And I had written Warner Brothers a couple of times, like, hey, I'm making these leg lamps, I, I want to get a license, I want to do this right, and it's it's a big place to kind of hard, hard to find, um, you know. And so I kind of got brushed off with a couple letters of, hey, uh, I basically. You're not worth our time, letters. Okay. You know? So sure. I was like, okay, whatever. You know, because I'm sure they get lots of stuff, and like mm-hmm. everybody wants to be this guy. And so, then I opened the house, and I, I gotten I I gotten contact with all the actors, and there's just hilarious stories there as well. 
um, just how I'm meeting them and how to get them out. They, and they actually came out for like a fundraiser and then out for a couple conventions and of course for the grand opening of the house. And then the guy who played uh, Flick, his name is Scott Schwartz, he wanted to do something with the uh, studio. He's like, and so he finally talked to the lady who I've been trying to get in contact with and said, hey, I have this friend, you know, he opened the house and he'd been trying to get in contact with you guys to get a license agreement. And well, she hadn't been allowed to contact me because she thought I wasn't trying to contact them and I was just trying to do things like for the yeah, piracy like or, whatever. or whatever. It was yeah. shady. I'm like, no, I've been trying, but the letters had gone to the wrong department and she'd been on this and they went here and went there. And I would never, I didn't know who to contact. And I just want, you know, again, just starting out and where to get, where to get to. Finally, I'm like, well, here, I, I've sent you guys this letter. Here's the forty. Oh, well, that's a completely different. We're all good. And they, you know, let me write you a deal. And so I got a license nice. agreement that's in awesome. order to operate the house, you know, and use all their logos and stuff because I had been avoiding that at first. Uh, it was just the house from a Christmas story. Mm -hmm. um, and then also to make all the product and get them officially licensed. And then also on top of that, and they gave me the the whole list of everybody who's licensed to make stuff that we can now buy stuff from ah, and sell okay. ourselves. And that's when the business went from here yeah. to this. So to like, wow. This yeah. is so my people are that, that's when we're from like a, that's uh, when it takes off. to like a career of like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is really going to work out. Like I had to go to like all these meetings and meet all these people to yeah. go buy stuff from them and, you know, get these, yeah. set up some deals and some, so, you know, some distribution. And stuff. So Brandon, I'm on redriderleglamps.com right now. Yes, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I was not prepared for this, but you know what? I'll answer. Oh, but I know the answer. Uh, he does too. Yeah. <laughs> Can I phone a friend? Can I phone a friend? You could phone a friend. What? Four holiday classics besides a Christmas story. Does Brian also sell merchandise from? Oh yeah, I do know the answer to this one. So you should probably yeah, answer. probably probably. So good. I'm gonna go Christmas Vacation. Check. Elf. Oh. Check. The other two a little more. Maybe a little cute. harder. Little little obscure. not obscure. A little harder. Mm -hmm. Think about merchandise, though. I, I'm thinking about merchandise because I, it would be awesome. An M16 from Die Hard. <laughs> is Die Hard a Christmas movie? No, it is. It is. It, is. Oh, it, it happens Christmas. during Christmas time. So, okay, yes. that's not one of my answers, no. but I would say that would be badass, right? If you're like, oh, it's a replica of you know, Bruce Willis's, you know, yeah. machine gun. He beats it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Do I do any hints? Can I get any hints? Can I get like a one to more of like a? You could consider it in that sort of. Fringe sort of uh, horror category, uh, but it's a Christmas nightmare movie. before Christmas. Yes, Boom. something. Okay. Yes, Fun not really horror, horror, but sort of. Okay, like, no, it was like it was like a cartoon that yeah. was not like a cartoonish kind of claymation yeah. or something. claymation or something. All right, so it's it's this is another classic. Another classic. Oh, it's probably going to be like a wonderful. No, no. Uh, it's, no, I would consider it a comedy. Yeah. Oh, it's comedy. Uh, you would consider it a comedy, yeah, or yeah, is yeah. it comedy? And yeah. also, that movie also very much revolves around the house. It does, and. Possible. Uh, it's also got oh, Home Alone. Home Alone. Yeah, that, oh, that, home Alone. Bravo. 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 Yeah, that, yeah, that didn't count. Then again, I will admit when I make mistakes. When they happen, not a those are probably later, though. So, would, so what do you sell from Home Alone? Like what? what, what uh, there's is? little you know T-shirts. Okay. The uh, Home Alone Two has those little two turtle doves. Oh yeah, yeah those okay, are super gotcha, popular. Gotcha. Um, okay. Little head knocker action figures. And so stuff. when you're thinking of like, hey, I want to sell some uh, moose mugs or uh, like we talked about the Vicky before yeah. the show from uh, with cousin Eddie. Yeah. Christmas um, Vacation. Do, do you go to the? Are those all Warner Brothers movies? Or uh, are you having to both Christmas of Vacation and Christmas Story are both owned by Warner okay. Brothers. So that was an easy connection. That's an easy connection. I just talk to the same you know, licensing executive and hey can I add this to my contract yeah sure you know, we'll, we'll add yeah. that in a little more royalties and we'll make more money you'll make more money we'll make more money um, yeah, but uh, like and then some of the stuff like um, Home Alone I think it's I forget who owns that Fox or mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can look it up out there yeah. I, but we don't, I should have done this research earlier I have an elf onesie downstairs I could have worn on the show. So, but for those yeah. I, I just buy stuff that are actually made by other licensees and we, okay. don't, we don't have a license to make our own stuff because the leg lamp is super popular for Chris Story. It's like almost like an iconic product. It's easy yeah. to you know, yeah, wrap yeah, around yeah. that. Like Elf's hard because Will Ferrell or Elf is the product. He is the, the yeah, thing. Okay. So then, like yeah, maybe what do you want a doll or you know some you know we, we've tried selling other different things from that. It's it's never quite been the popularity of the leg lamp. Of course. So if I want to make sure that and then for our listeners because you you want it, we we always on this show we we promote stuff we stand behind quality stuff right no BS knockoffs right. How do you make sure that you get like an actual license, like quality leg lamp? Like, like what is the best route to, to purchase one of these things? Go to my website. Red Rider, the website. Red, yeah. Okay, it's the Red Rider Red Rider Rider Rider. Or if you go to ChristmasStoryHouse.com, that'll take you over to Red okay. Rider Leg So buy it direct there yeah. and make sure there's no, so, you know, right. no uh, shady stuff going on. What about, can you buy a Red Rider there? 
You, you can. We, we even sell like special anniversary editions because actually that, there's a funny trivia story. So the gun that you see in the movie was actually never made. Really? Like by by Red by Daisy yeah, that right. makes them. Uh, yeah. So the the author of Chris story, his name is Gene Shepard. That's who he's a radio personality and author. And that Bob Clark turned his writings and stories into the movie. Uh, he combined a Red Rider and a Buck Jones 107 special, just maybe stuff from childhood or maybe yeah. on a purpose for theatrics. But there's never a compass and a sundial in a regular Red Rider BB gun. Yeah, there's so not. There's not. In, in is this a regular one? No, there, yeah, that, that, that's a Red Rider. That's a yeah, so Red you see? But, but he said it was should have been right no, there. No right? compass, no sundial. sundial. This is a regular one. So they, yeah. they you know, so when the movie okay. studio uh, talked to them, like, well, frankly, we've never made that. You know, well, frankly, would you? <laughs> Do you care? <laughs> so they made six for the movie. We have one of them in the oh. museum. Peter Billingsley played Ralphie, ended up with one, and the other one went yeah. different places. So. Okay. So that's that's how you can tell if it's a movie made one if it's a, of that time period and has a. So an, you're an engineer. You know a lot about math and stuff. Couple um, things. Do you think two plus two is smart? Could, there you go. Nice. Right. Well, this would be easy. Do you think you could actually shoot your eye out with one of those? Because I don't like. I've been shot with those several <laughs> times. They don't. I mean, they, they hurt. Like it's not a fun thing to do. But like maybe you got it right in the eye. But I'm thinking a ricochet would be kind of hard. Yeah. yeah, you have to have a really, really good bad one. angle on a piece of steel. It certainly. Would I mean, not it would have to be off. like point blank. <laughs> someone like holding your. I, I mean, it would have to be like if you and I were just having a little like battle outside with it. Yeah, it's you know, there's always the possibility. So yeah. let's wear your safety glasses. Let's, let's safety look, glasses. disclaimer: so wear your safety, safety glasses. Wear safety glasses. Wear your safety glasses. I think, uh, I think sure. it's more likely that you would get your your tongue stuck on a uh, cold, uh, icy pole. Yeah. That is more like that. Have you ever seen anyone attempt that? Uh, it usually pops up where you know you'll. I tried to actually do it as a kid on um, the metal mm -hmm. in my freezer. Is it is not it, knowing it, that is before? It after you saw the shit? No, it was beforehand. Like what happened? You know, just but I, it was. I didn't do it real hard, so like it came off real. You know, just a small piece of it. I grew up in Florida. Well, you grew up in Hawaii in, in California, yeah. so you probably didn't have a lot of yeah. There was there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity. Over. But I remember seeing that as a kid and thinking, like, it kind of, I was kind of scared of it. Like, that really oh, happens. Oh, it's don't, no do joke. That. don't do and it, kids. We, we, moved up, we moved up north for a little bit with the family for, for a work thing. And I remember telling my kids, I was like, don't let anyone convince you. They tell you to stick, <laughs> stick your tongue on the flagpole out there. And yeah, they were yeah. like, that's a weird thing, Dad. Why are they telling me? Just trust me on this one. Oh, they're going to do because you won't think anything of it. You don't yeah. realize it's, yeah. it's going to be a danger. Uh, what's, your, what's your most favorite thing about about what you do, about about your company and, and what you get to do every day. Wow, the most favorite thing. It's cool owning your business, you know, yeah. I, I get to call the shots on, you know, what I'm doing, where I'm going. Um, I get to not be a dick as the boss, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. You know, I, yeah. I usually, you know, I'm, I live down here in Florida, the business is up there, I have people who run stuff and I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, mean, I have high standards, like I want it to be here, mm -hmm. but how you get there is up to you and, you know, hey, what do you, I'm always asking, you know, hey, what do you guys want to do for this, you know, how, how, how's this going to work? And also kind of realizing, you know, I don't always have the right answers. That's sure. kind of cool. I think that's why yeah. I want to, because in the Navy, I'd say of maybe eight, ten bosses I had, like maybe two. Yeah. It's funny because you go to the Navy Academy to tell you how, how, how always to lead people, how to do things right. And every freaking example is just, these guys are blowing it up and doing it completely wrong. They're like, what the hell? Right, so right, I think that's right. always the thing where it's like, man, I want to get away from this. Uh, yeah, just, and just being able to run my own schedule, you know, do what I do, what I want to do, and that what, it was never that way in the beginning. The the business ran my life, you mm -hmm. know, like I, I wouldn't go on vacations or if I'm on vacation, I'm always thinking about the business. The business is always in my head. I'm trying to make it make it run better. How do we? Especially when you know, businesses are fragile, especially in the beginning. You know, if something goes wrong. You know, hey, if the, if this COVID thing happened when I was just first starting out, we probably wouldn't have made it. Right. We're like, you know, people stop buying stuff. We're out of, you know, we're. You know, mm -hmm. say I tried to open the business, you know, that day nobody's yeah, going to no, show no, up like yeah. the huge on, line on down March fifteenth or something yeah. of twenty twenty. Yeah, right? yeah no, it would have been so. So you know, it, it hadn't always been that way. Um, but I, I think probably having the freedom um, yeah. to run my own business, you know, make a good living, just doing it you know, this way and being able to live in Florida with a business sure. in Ohio, solving problems, right? You're solving problems, right? you, you know, and then, and then it's great for fans, you know, fellow fans. You, you, yeah. Every once in a while, especially when I go on the shows up there, I'll just sit at the bench across the street, nobody knows who I am. They'll be talking to people. You see the family get out of the car, like, oh my gosh. You see, it's, they haven't got anywhere. They get out of the car, they all run up to get a picture and see the house and just kind of check it out. I'm like, that was me, that back was in 04. Yeah. Yeah. So, just yeah. to see the other people get to relive the the amazement and the awe yeah. that, I, that, I, that I got. Now, are there, are there like... A Christmas story super fans that yeah yeah we call them Ralphies 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 you know you got Trekkies we got yeah, Ralphies Ralphies uh, I mean there's people so it's it's kind of funny like a little maybe 
half block radius. I'm super famous. People will see me like, oh, you're Brian Challenge. You're the guy. And I've been on TV and things, and people recognize me. I have a lady who, who's gotten my autograph a couple of different times. I'm actually nicknamed the Brian Jones because uh, I was, I guess, walking through. Uh, we were having a convention with the actors, and there's these two old ladies over there standing, in my, and two of my employees were by them, and they're like, oh, that's the Brian Jones. And so they, they, I, they razzed me so hard. And wow. I was like, oh, the man, you're so, you're the Brian. So ever since then, I've been the Brian that's Jones. Awesome. So wow. I think, that's you know, awesome. it's, it's a funny remix. So it's cool that you can kind of see what it's like to be famous, but then still keep right. anonymity. And it would be weird, you know, constantly, if you, if you went anywhere, somebody's always all cool and like just in awe of you. I'm like, dude, I'm just a guy. Yeah. I'm just yeah. A guy who owns a business who owns a guy who happened to. Yeah. So a guy who happened to build leg lamps. Yeah. yeah. Build leg lamps. So, so the shirt you're wearing, you mentioned, you said that word once earlier, but. I, Fragile? Yes. I was going to ask you how do you pronounce it. Fragile. It must be Italian. It's not French. People often th throw French in there. It's Italian. So uh, it's Italian. Fragile. Yes. Fragile. 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 That's what, that is that that's, that's that reference doesn't count either. If anybody comments on this and says a Christmas, Christmas story, story there, yeah, right. you owe us a t-shirt. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> there, you there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Send us your yeah. favorite. T no, don't send us your favorite t-shirt. So, so are there any original leg lamps left? No, and actually, so in the late nineties, um, Martin Malibu, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's the guy who made the lamp. He was the you know set uh, guy making some of the, the products and things to for. He had it in the window of his shop, and he was moving shops. You know, I guess the lease that was out or whatever. And the, the shade was gone, but it was just kind of sitting there, kind of old and you know decrepit. Um, and instead of taking it with him, he crushed it down and threw it in the trash. Oh, oh so then they made I think they made at least three. Uh, you know, different stories. It's been you know what since '83. How many stories are? And funny, I actually found all the costumes a quarter century later in a warehouse uh, when I was looking for stuff. Um, on some lot in, you know, just, uh, a, just in Canada and this lady who was the wardrobe mistress she kept them all and you could still go rent them and she even had her notebook you know through ring binder mm -hmm. yellow binder that had all of her Polaroids for the movie it was, it was nuts I couldn't believe it I almost, I, I almost lost it I, it was like whoa no way um, but yeah no he crushed it down threw it away uh, today what that's worth who knows yeah well, you, you, just, pay you put it. it at Christie's and put it up for auction and see what happens isn't it so. crazy how people I mean, I'm sure there's some dude somewhere there probably are several dudes in a lot of a lot of places that have like you know a 1954 Mickey Mantle rookie card yeah and we're like it was like a bookmark yeah, or something like, yeah. and they're like ah this is stupid yeah baseball cards for kids so it's just one of those things he knows he knows yeah. you know, we've talked to him about it he's like yeah oh well <laughs> yeah man that's crazy I have a trivia question I thought about on the way over uh -oh. tonight for you. Okay. Uh, speaking of Christmas Ooh. movies, oh, and cool. I think we name, you guys can both answer. Um, the house from Christmas Vacation was also the house in what Mel Gibson movie? I know. What Mel Gibson movie? Oh. Um, it involves a flying toilet, if that helps. It doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't. It does. That's the scene I was going to talk about because it, okay. no it no longer existed to be a house. It was, yeah. it was demolished. Yeah. Uh, I'm no, it's still there. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. it's still there. It's still a little. Is it? Okay. Um, Chicago somewhere. Isn't it? it is. No, in Chicago. It's, it, 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 the, the movie Chicago, but that's on the Warner Brothers Ranch Warner in Burbank, Brothers. California. That house is. Yeah, like that whole road. That whole road. In fact, the fa the, like the just... opening for Friends. Yeah. is on is in the fountain that's just right across the street from that house. Uh, so it's like a whole little like community that. But yep, that doesn't get you out of the answer no. the question. No, this is vacation. What? Christmas, Christmas Vacation, vacation. House is where? Your house is no. also in which Mel Gibson movie? Yeah. I'm drawing a blank, man. Okay. Brain fart. It was Lethal Weapon oh. 2. Exploding Lethal Weapon 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, is it Danny Glover? That's, yeah, Danny Glover's on a dump, dump and they've like, got they put a bomb under yeah. his toilet. But he's like, look, we got to get to the bathtub because it's made out of iron, you know, yeah. whatever, yeah. old school. Iron or everything. We could do this all day long, by the way, on this trivia thing. We could. Yeah. But, well, we need to have Pat back on. Also, uh, Naval yeah. Academy grad. Yeah. To do yeah. some more. Uh, but he yeah. likes ships, so he would do the boat. Uh, hey, stuff, ships. So. If you like ships, that's good. But yeah. you got to know, you got to be uh, passionate yeah, about it because it's going to be a lot of hard work. Yeah. yeah. And that was not my passion. I was there for the planes. Yeah. I hear you, man. I hear you. Well, thanks for joining us today, bro. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, so, one more time Red Rider Leg Lamp. Dot com. Red Red Lake Lamps dot com or a Christmas or Story House. Christmas com. Story House. And you have like uh, you know social media handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Facebook or Christmas slash a Christmas Story Dark. House. Yeah, Red Rider Leg Lamps. Twitter, all that good stuff. Awesome. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, 
It's a fascinating story, dude. Yeah, it's it really, different. Really, it's it's it really certainly, is. like I said, not, yeah, certainly so. not what I plan to do in life, yeah. but it's been an interesting you gotta adventure. Love America. Yeah. You gotta love America. Only, America. only in America only is a America, leg lamp or Christmas only, ornament. Only, only in America. For our listeners out there, make sure to catch up on all of our past episodes and subscribe on wherever you listen to your podcast for the full video experience. Make sure to check us out on YouTube. From the studios, Brian, and on behalf of all dudes out there grinding it out, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Dudology Show, your spot for cool stories, awesome stuff, and killer gear. Make sure to subscribe to us on your favorite listening platform and follow us on social media at Dudology Show. Dudology Show.